Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to present on learning to protect communications with adversarial neural cryptography, and uh, you'll get to understand what adversarial neural cryptography is as I proceed through the presentation. And uh, this is basically based on uh, generative adversarial networks (GANs). So let's begin. So in our setup, there are three neural networks and they are known as Alice, Bob and Eve. And Alice and Bob are communicating and Eve is the one who is eavesdropping on the communication between Alice and Bob. So Alice and Bob have to communicate without uh, uh, Eve being able to figure out what Alice and Bob are trying to communicate. So the cool thing about this is that we haven't specified any cryptographic algorithms to these neural networks and we are just training them adversarially. So what this means is that Bob and Eve are going to compete with each other so that Alice and Bob are able to communicate securely and even though Eve is able to listen to their information, Eve is not able to figure out what's going on between Alice and Bob. At the end of the presentation, uh, you'll understand that even though we didn't specify any forms of encryption or decryption or any forms of cryptography, these networks were uh, able to securely transfer data. And here's the link to the paper down here. Uh, if you want to read it, uh, you can read it. It's a bit complex, but it is very interesting. Okay, so this is the setup uh, we have. Uh, this is available here. Uh, it consists of Alice, Bob, and E. So Alice has the plain text and the key, and Alice generates the ciphertext C, which is received by Bob. Bob is also having the key, which is used to de decrypt the ciphertext to plain text back again. And E receives the ciphertext, but E doesn't have any key available with it. So the job of Alice is to produce an n bit output which we will call ciphertext. And uh, let's talk about a bit about the architecture of the network. So um, Alice has a fully con connected layer in the that is the first layer. And then there are four layers which are used to convolute the values uh, uh, generated after the permutation va permutated values uh, generated by the network. And the structure of Bob is similar to that of Alice. Eve is the eavesdropper, but Eve only gets the ciphertext as input and not the key. So you must be thinking that how are Alice and Bob are going to figure out whether Eve is able to read the data which they're communicating or not. So let's look into that. So uh, how this uh, how this is explained is through loss functions. So there are there's a loss function specified for Alice and Bob, and there's one loss function specified for E. And the aim of this experiment was to maximize E's reconstruction error and minimize Bob's. And how the training takes place is that first Alice and Bob uh, train, and after that Alice and Eve train and then their loss functions are com computed and depending on the loss functions we uh, define whether the training was successful or not so uh, what are the threshold values which uh, which are specified for bob and uh, eve so a successful training would mean that bob is able to uh, get most of the bits right after uh, decrypting the text and there should be at most 0 0.05 bits of reconstruction error for Alice and Bob, whereas with Eve should only achieve one to more bits than random guessing what predicts. So Eve's loss function is set up as the L1 distance from the Overstone message. And uh, one thing to note here is that the loss function of Alice and Bob uh, takes into account the loss function of Eve as well. So if Eve does a good job in despairing the ciphertext, then the uh, loss function value of Bob is going to increase. So the next time they train together, Alice and Bob will have to find a bit better way so that Alice is not able to decipher uh, what Alice and 
Eve is not able to decipher what Alice and Bob were talking about. Okay, so the system was trained for 20 times, and out of the, uh, those 20 times, 14 times the system trained successfully, and uh, six times it failed, uh, which means the threshold values of 0 0.05 and around 7 to 8 bits for Eve were not reached six times. So let's look at this graph on the left hand side. Uh, in the beginning, the reconstruction errors of bo both Bob and Eve were high. You can see that around 8 bits of reconstruction error was there in the beginning for both Bob and Eve. And after around 10,000 steps, Bob started figuring out what Alice was saying. At the same time, uh, you can also see that Eve was also able to uh, figure out what uh, Alice was saying. So its reconstruction uh, error is also dropping. At around uh, 12,000 steps, uh, Bob understands that Eve is also able to decipher what me and Alice are talking. So they change their uh, learning methods and at around 15,000 steps, the uh, goals were achieved and uh, then Alice and Bob were able to communicate securely and we, Eve was not able to figure out what was going on between Alice and Bob. So after that, the, yeah, after that the thresh, uh, Bob was able to figure out all the encrypted values but Eve's reconstruction error, it remained somewhere on seven, between 7 to 8 bits. So what would be the ideal case for this? The ideal case for this would be that Bob is able to get all the bits right, whereas Eve gets around 8 bits wrong uh, when it's trying to decipher the ciphertext. So this was a part of the research and uh, they also did an experiment after this. The architecture was modified a bit and then they demonstrated the viability of selective correction as well. It's a bit different than, than the things which we discussed right now, but uh, if you read the paper, then that is pretty interesting as well. So what do we conclude out of this uh, research? We can conclude that neural networks can learn to protect communications, even though they're not trained for with any specific crypt cryptography method. So how do they, how did they, how did we achieve it? We just specified a secrecy specification and the neural networks were able to reach that, uh, satisfy that secrecy specification and that, that's how they communicated securely. This is also a very, uh, there, this is, we should also note that there's more to crypt cryptography than encryption and maybe in the future we won't depend on class, classical cryptography for securing our communications and maybe our crypto systems are replaced by neural networks. Finally, we can also conclude that uh, if Eve is able to break the ciphertext every time, then Eve can be the ideal attacker for any crypto system. If you have any questions, then you can go ahead and ask them right now. Thank you.